Welcome. Welcome to this place in cyberspace, which we sometimes refer to as the virtual mission chapel of the Archangel Uriel, part of the Temple of Gaia. Whether this looks like something you've avoided or something you miss, we hope you will find what you're looking for while you're here. We are omnidenominational. We don't teach you our path. We help you find your own path. If you have a path, we hope we can add some dimension to it while you're here. And you're welcome to stay as long as you'd like. If you don't have a spiritual path, we can help you find yours. If you once did have a spiritual path, but you were driven away by issues, especially issues having to do with other people on that path, we hope that you can come here for the healing you need and the restoration you deserve. Above all, welcome. Merry meet, and blessed be, and a blessed Letha. I consecrate this circle of power to the ancient gods. Here may they manifest and bless their child. I consecrate this circle of power to the ancient gods. Here may they manifest and bless their child. This is a time that is not a time. In it place that is not a place, on a day that is not a day, I stand at the threshold between the worlds, before the veil of mysteries, may the ancient ones help and protect me on my magical journey. I call upon you powers of air to witness this rite and to guard this circle. I call upon you, powers of fire, to witness this right and to guard this circle. I call upon you, powers of water, to witness this right and to guard this circle. I call upon you, powers of earth, to witness this rite and to guard this circle. Hamari Nodri Helgeveta Dark Hotvert Hamari Austri Helgeveta Dark Hotvert Hamari Sudri Helgeveta Dark Hotvert Hamari Vestri, Helgeveta Dark Hotford. Hamar Ufemir, Helgeveta Dark Hotford. Hamar Untemir, Helgeveta Dark Hotford. Hamar, Helgeveta Dark Hotford. Umi Gokimir, as Garder of Midgarder. Circle is bound with power all round. Within it I stand with protection at hand. A reading from the Hebrew English Tanakh. Psalm 82, a psalm of Asaph. God stands in the divine assembly among the divine beings. He pronounces judgment. How long will you judge perversely, showing favor to the wicked? Shut up. Judge the wretched and the orphan. Vindicate the lowly and the poor. 
Rescue the wretched and the needy. Save them from the hand of the wicked. They neither know nor understand. They go about in darkness. All the foundations of the earth totter. I have I had taken you for divine beings, sons of the Most High, all of you. But you shall die as men do, fall like any prince. Arise, O God, judge the earth, for all the nations are your possession. I read from the Tanakh, a wonderful little book published by the Jewish Publication Society because I wanted to present it to you as closely I could to someone who read it in the original Hebrew for a reason. Actually, I could have taken a more modern version out of one of the more modern Bibles in more contemporary language and some of it would sound like I took it out of a book written by a Wiccan. And there are some things here that I think we really need to understand. stands in the divine assembly among divine beings. Maybe they're talking about more than just angels here. But especially, I had taken you for divine beings, sons of the Most High, all of you. had taken you for divine beings, sons of the Most High, all of you. And what does that have to do with Letha? Take a look. You can see on the spoked wheel here, or on any calendar, we're talking about Letha. And if you take a look at the wheel of the year, Letha and you are direct opposite. What's the uh, implication? Plenty. You, the child is born. Letha, the God has completed every stage of growing up and reaching to maturity. The last Sabbath was Beltane when he got married and now here he stands full, complete and established, fulfilled. Fulfilled. And what's left to do is coming up. The harvests. So you've got one side of the year that is building up and the other side of the year is the reaping of what's planted. Is one way of looking at it. And so, here's this God standing, ready to go. What's the most important thing that this God needs to know about? What he has. And I think, if you go through just about anybody's revered texts, certainly Christian and Jewish scripture, you're going to find an awful lot of cases of where somebody missed out 
or acts like they're going to miss out because they don't know what they got. They don't know what they have. And they don't know that what they do have is what they need and maybe what they're asking for. You've probably heard the story about the rich young ruler who comes up to Yeshua and, and says, What must I do to inherit eternal life? And Yeshua asks him, Well, have you done this and this and this and all this other stuff? You know, the law and the prophets and all that. And he says, Yes, I've been doing that. Oh, well, in that case, one thing you lack. Take all you have, give it to the poor, and follow me. Well, there's a trick to that. Why didn't he know that he had eternal life? You go to this to just after the Christmas story, when Mary and Joseph take the baby Yeshua into the temple. And there's a man named Simeon, moved by the Holy Spirit. And there are some among, among some of the more evangelical who would probably just love nothing more than to say, no, 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 can't do that. Don't get Holy Spirit until Pentecost. Uh -uh. No, Holy Spirit was already there. It was at Pentecost when the Christians got told, hey, you got it. Didn't bother telling him, hey, you already got it. No, here it is. You already had it. But I'm telling you that you already did. But now you do, okay? And that's a big lesson that a lot of us, including me, have had to learn. Finding out just how much you already have. And seeing what can be done with it, which can be an awful lot. And on that note, we celebrate midsummer and look forward to some wonderful harvests. And so mote it be. Since the dawn of time, people have sought communion with the divine, and the divine has sought to facilitate that communion. Toward that end, the divine has acquired many faces and facets, so that over the generations, people would be able to envision and commune with the divine in terms which they could understand. Now as we come to know better the ways of our ancestors and the ways of others, we strive to see the unity behind the innumerable faces and facets of the divine. Like a diamond, the divine has facets, each facing a particular direction and having its own characteristics, but each facet is connected to each other facet by the rest of the diamond, such that no facet can claim to be the entire diamond. And that diamond is the divine, that most high God, whose first priest known to us by name was Melchizedek. I stand here before the most high God, as a mortal among mortals. I am a priest because the divine called me to be a priest. And I hold myself accountable to the divine for my deeds as a priest. And I stand with the priests and priestesses who have come before me in proclaiming faith in the divine. 
I believe in the unnamed God, the bornless one, from whom all else, divine and mundane, was created, and in the many facets of the Godhead, named and not without name, seen as gods, goddesses, or otherwise, which reach out to receive each person within commun within mankind in communion, each according to his or her perception and understanding of the divine. And I believe in the archangels Raphael, Gabriel, Michael, and Ariel, and other angels known and unknown. And I believe in one earth, the mother of us all, and in one womb wherein all men and women are begotten and wherein they shall rest. And I believe in many paths to the divine, all leading to the divine. And I believe in the gathering of people of like mind, and the power and energy they raise when gathered for like purpose. And I believe in the communion of saints, and for as much as food and drink are transmuted to us daily into spiritual substance, I believe in the miracle of the Mass. And I confess one baptism of wisdom, whereby we accomplish the miracle of incarnation. And I confess my life, one individual and eternal, which was and is and is to come. So mote it be. And so we proclaim the great mystery of the divine. A God is born. A God lives. A God has died. A God is born again. Well, Father Odin, Lady Freya, El Shaddai, Mar Yeshua, Mighty Thor, Lady Frigga, Lady Sif, Raphael, Gabriel, Mikhail, Uriel, and all those called upon by those who are joining us. We invite you and welcome you to this temple, to this circle, to this rite. We welcome you. And as a token of that welcome, in accordance with the ancient way, we break bread with you. Hail and welcome. We welcome you in reverence and respect, but also in friendship. We welcome you in friendship. And as a token of that friendship and to bind that friendship, in accordance with the ancient ways. We offer drink. Hail and welcome. Behold the feast with which we welcome the divine. Take of the bread and of the cup and feast and celebrate as the divine within welcomes the divine without. We thank you for coming, and we celebrate your coming, and we thank you also for hearing our prayers and petition, my petition for the healing of my beloved and beautiful wife, 
and High Priestess, Lady Storm, and those presented by the others here who join us either physically or through cyberspace. We thank you. We thank you for coming. And thank you for being there for us. Thank you and bless us. And bless us all. On this wonderful Letha. And so more it be. forth in peace. O powers of air, my thanks and my blessings. Go forth in peace, O powers of fire, my thanks and my blessings. Go forth in peace, O powers of water, my thanks and my blessings. Go forth in peace, O powers of earth, my thanks and my blessings. To all beings and powers of the visible and invisible depart in peace. May there always be love, peace, and harmony between us. My thanks and my blessing. The circle is open, yet effort remains a circle. Around and through me, always, flows its magical power. So more it be. And a blessed Letha to one and all. Uriel's Gifts and the Secrets in Plain Sight are sponsored by the Temple of Gaia. Your spiritual journey is exactly that, a journey. Like any other journey, there's a beginning point, there's a destination, and there's every step from the start to the finish. Religion is like underwear. What works well for me might be inappropriate for someone else, including you. I can guarantee you that no matter how similar our paths are, they will not be identical. At Temple of Gaia, we don't train you to our path. We show you how to find and pursue your own path. We also help you prepare for your ministry. Prepare, yes, no matter how far along you are, there will always be something coming to prepare for. Ministry, we all have a ministry, beginning with our own ministry to ourselves. Above all, we provide a great place to come together and to share. We're located in Collingdale, Pennsylvania, just outside of Philadelphia, and wherever cyberspace can be reached. Temple of Gaia is a Wiccan church incorporated under the laws of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. To learn more, visit our website at templeofgaiainc.org. That's T-E-M-P-L-E-O-F-G-A-I-A-I-N-C dot O-R-G. We also have a meeting place in cyberspace at templeofgaia.ning.com. If you like this, you might also enjoy our weekly audio podcast, The Secrets in Plain Sight, available through iTunes or almost any place else where free podcasts are available for download, including its own website at secrets.libsyn.com. Thank you for coming. I hope that you've found something here that can help, perhaps a seed that might take hold and grow to your benefit. Feel free to return at any time. We intend to always have something for you here. Blessed be. This has been a presentation of the Wise Ones Net. Merry part and blessed be.